Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Pip, 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 powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name and price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Make room for a brand new year and a brand new room. Cozy up with HomeDepot.com for up to 30% off select mattresses and mattress essentials. From pillow top to plush, medium firm to memory foam. Waking up to a wonderful new mattress is the perfect way to make your new bed and your new year. Up to 30% off select mattresses and mattress essentials. From HomeDepot.com, how doers get more done. Online only, free delivery on select items, $45 or more. Visit HomeDepot.com for more information. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for downloading Beer Nuts for free on iTunes or from ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate Beer Nuts five stars on iTunes and help to tell others about Beer Nuts by leaving a comment. Thank you for following Beer Nuts on Twitter at Beer Nuts Podcast and on Instagram at Beer Nuts Podcast. Please like the Beer Nuts Podcast on Facebook to like and share Beer Nuts. If you'd like to donate to Beer Nuts, you can click on the PayPal button at ChristopherMedia.net. If you use Amazon.com, please click and bookmark the Amazon link at ChristopherMedia.net. It will not cost you any extra money, and you will help to support Beer Nuts. If you're looking to launch your own website, please click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Christopher Media uses HostGator to host all of the shows produced by the Christopher Media Network. When you click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net and sign up for HostGator, you are helping to support Beer Nuts. TheBroBasket.com Guys are tired of all those boring socks and ties. BroBasket is the answer to the age-old question, What do I get a guy? We know that choosing the perfect gift for a man is a difficult task, but not anymore. TheBroBasket.com is here to help. We all know men are hard to shop for, but what do guys actually like? Their favorite alcohol, that's what. It could be craft beer, wine, whiskey, scotch, or tequila. TheBroBasket.com will put it in a gift basket full of their favorite gear and goodies. You can customize your own bro basket or choose from a variety of different bro baskets, like the Ultimate Import Sampler, the Jack and Coke Gift Set, or the Junior Executive Gift Basket. Booze list but still cool bro baskets are also available. TheBroBasket.com gives you many shipping options to choose from, including rush delivery and Saturdays. 21 and over, please. State and local laws apply. Beer, wine, and liquor are not available for shipping in all states. You can help to support Christopher Media by clicking through the TheBroBasket.com banner at ChristopherMedia.net. Alcohol gift baskets. What men really want. Men used to be hard to shop for. TheBroBasket.com. Christopher Media, let's make some noise. Welcome to Beer Nuts, a weekly excursion into the world of craft beer. Brought to you by MichiganBeerGuide.com. And now, here are the Beer Nuts. Okay, everyone, welcome to another episode of Beer Nuts, episode number 79. This week we're going to be talking about drinking local, so our episode is titled Drink Local. Which, uh, support your local breweries, your local independent craft breweries, so... Uh, we have three of us from three different areas tonight. Uh, some of our regulars are busy or on travel, but that's okay. We have three different localities represented. So I'd like to introduce uh, Ross from North Carolina is with us tonight. Welcome, Ross. Hey, nice to be back. And we have Lieutenant Dang, Dan from Missouri. Happy Beer 30, everyone. Amen. And yours truly, JR, here in uh, southeastern Michigan, just outside of Detroit. So we're going to be drinking a few local beers from each of these three localities. But first, uh, we always like to start off the the show with a quote of the week. This week's quote of the week is, A camel can work for a week without drinking, but a man can drink for a week without working. (laughs) All right. So on that note, we'd like to invite everybody to join us and crack open a cold beer uh, and kick back and relax. We're not pretentious. Whatever uh, style of beer you enjoy is good with us. We're just here to introduce more people to more good beers. So I think a lot of us, uh, it's stout season here, and uh, we were reviewing our lineups tonight. I think majority of beers will be stouts tonight, but uh, that's just because it's stout season, and it's also because most of us on the show really enjoy uh, good stouts. So I'm going to start off the show 
with uh, a nice local brewery that uh, I enjoy going to in here in the Detroit area, only about a 20-minute drive from my house. Um, and the, the name of this uh, beer is Black Knight Satellite from Batch Brewing Company in Detroit. Uh, Batch is located in uh, just outside, uh, in, in the city limits. And uh, this particular beer is an imperial coffee stout brewed with white pine coffee, cascara, and lactose. 9.3% ABV, comes in a 16.9 ounce bottle. Batch is located at, 9, at 1400 Porter Street in Detroit. So uh, anybody who travels to Detroit, look these guys up. They're not too far from Little Caesars Arena and all the sports complex if you're in town for an event or a game. So without further ado, I just need to find a bottle opener. Here it is. Let's crack this open, and I've waited all night for a beer, so... Okay, here we go. So cheers, everybody. Whatever you're drinking, crack it open. Hopefully it's from one of your locals. All right, so I've got a really look good-looking beer here, uh, and really nice, uh, about one finger head, nice uh, light brown tan head. Uh, you know, it's a stout, so it's uh, pretty much coal black. Uh, on the aroma, I'm definitely smelling the coffee. Uh, coffee more than anything else. So I'm just going to dive right in and taste this. Oh, well, very deli It's delicious. Uh, it's it, it's got a nice coffee flavor to it, but it's not overpowering a coffee bomb. It's you know got the, the lactose in there, sweeten it up a little bit. So it's almost like a coffee with a little bit of cream and sugar in it. Not sure what cascara is. I see that as an ingredient. I'm going to have to look that up. But I do like what it says on the label. It says beer makes me happy, which is batch is uh, one of their mottos, I guess. Uh, and it always makes me happy to go to Batch because it's a really, really great atmosphere. Uh, one of my favorite local breweries. Uh, one of the great things about going to Batch is they have big, long tables like they do at uh, German beer festivals, conducive to, you know, everybody sits together. You sit, you know, next to strangers, and pretty soon when you leave, you don't, there are no strangers. Everyone's your friend. So it's a unique little place. They always have, uh, you know, good supply of bottles to go. Uh, they do distribute, but pretty much very locally, uh, you know, a few small accounts close to the brewery uh, and within, you know, maybe an hour of Detroit. So, uh, but this Black Knight Satellite was actually a uh, release that they had uh, several weeks ago that I, I picked this up and another one of my favorites from them uh is a beer called Dick Smasher in the Rye, which is another stout aged in rye whiskey barrels. That's another good one, uh, barrel aged. But this is very, uh, very tasty, uh, kind of tastes uh, on, the, on the side of a milk stout with the lactose in there, uh, which is basically what a milk stout is. But, you know, really, really good, solid coffee, not overpowering, but uh, very well-balanced beer here, so... Good job, Batch. I, I knew they wouldn't disappoint me. Uh, I really enjoy their beers. They make a, a very broad uh, variety of beers there. So if anybody ever gets to Detroit, look up Batch Brewing. Nice. I so, looked up uh, – uh, I thought Cascara was something to do with uh, coffee, and uh, so I looked that up while you were talking. And uh, it is the – so the coffee seed, for those who haven't heard of this before – the coffee bean, as we think of it, is actually the seed from the inside of a, a fruit. And so cascara is the fruit itself. Um, Wikipedia says that it is the coffee cherry. I'm oh, sorry, hold on. It's the fruit. It's basically the dried skins, the dried berry of the coffee plant known as cascara from, uh, it's a Spanish word meaning husk. So. Oh, thanks for enlightening me there. I, I was wondering what that was. And, uh, uh, I do yeah. feel enlightened with every sip. <laughs> One other thing I, I neglected to mention about Batch is uh, they have really, really good food at Batch, and they have a, a fantastic chef 
Um, I'm on their website now, and uh, I completely forgot about how good the food is here. I actually ran into uh, some friends of mine at the brewery one time that had brought their, their whole family in, including their children, because they make some uh, bread pudding. They got some kind of huge award um, for being like in the best of Detroit desserts, which would be shocking for just a little brew pub to have that. But that's how good the chef chef is, Chef Matt. And here, just reading uh, briefly from their website, it says handcrafted scratch kitchen pub cuisine. Chef Matt and his team work every day to prepare fresh food with care and creativity that rivals what we do in the brewery. Food is not something we also do. It's something we do with great pride. And it's almost mandatory when you go there to order something because uh, just unbelievably uh, great food, uh, a little bit of a different menu um, uh, in, a, in a very good way. So I just pulled up their menu. Just They've got a gator gumbo with crawfish and dewy sausage and white rice. Uh, they got a smoked white fish spread. Uh, Thai chili chicharronis. I remember I had those fried pork skins. They were delicious. Uh, chorizo dip. Braised short rib pasty. For those of you not familiar with pasties in uh, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, that's a popular uh, dish. It's uh, kind of like a, uh, well, it says braised short rib, onions, carrots, and celery in a house made pastry pocket served with Rauchbach gravy. And they got fish or shrimp tacos. Uh, I could go on shrimp po, po' boy. Oh, the other thing I really like is the pork belly bolillo, braised pork belly. Uh, uh, unbelievable food here. Um, uh, almost. Uh, oh, there's the uh, bread pudding. Toffee stout bread pudding topped with chocolate sauce and house made peanut brittle. That stuff is to die for. Wow. So, uh, and then uh, not to slight their beers, because uh, maybe I should uh, pull up a little bit about that. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before I move on into the beer selection is the, they have, uh, and they're not the only brewery in the Detroit area, but uh, some breweries participate in this, but they have what's called a feel-good tap. The feel-good tap raises funds to support local and regional nonprofits throughout Michigan with a focus on community, culture, and wellness. So basically, it's a tap that uh, whenever you buy a beer, they contribute a dollar from the beer, every beer poured off that tap to go towards a local charity. And uh, that's why they call it the feel good tap. So whenever you go in, there will be one of the taps will have a, a special tap handle. This is the feel good tap. So, you know, that's another great thing about drinking local because your local breweries always support local causes. And uh, it really is a feel good story when they do that. So, uh just absolutely a great place here. And uh, now I just got to find their beer list. Sounds like a fantastic place. Uh, one quick question, John. Yeah, Do, sure. uh, we I found here in Springfield, Missouri, we I have a hard time finding very many places to go that have not, I mean, they have good, really, really good beer. I'll have a couple of things on tap that's going to be something not I mean not special. It doesn't have to be the rarest thing in the world, but a place that has pretty good beer and pretty good food, just the combination of both of those, I'm kind of limited. Probably in Detroit, you don't have that issue, I'm guessing. Well, there are, you know, there are breweries here that don't either don't serve food or serve very you know, have very limited options. I would say, uh, out of all the local breweries, by far, this is the best, uh, you know, in terms of quality food menu. Uh, by far, by a mile. I mean, these guys are like almost like a food destination. Um, but that being said, no, there are a lot of breweries that have a solid menu. Um, and, you know, I, I just pulled up the, the beer menu, uh, by the way. Um, so I'm just going to go with what they have on tap today, just so you get a, a feel for, you know, the kind of beers they serve. They have a Milk Goblin Milk Stout, four and a half ABV. It's a basic, you know, uh, session milk stout. Five pound box of money is a spiced herb, herb to beer, a ginger blonde quad at 11% ABV, Empire Pale Ale, that's their standard pale, American Pale Ale, 6.2%, a Rogan beer, which is rye, that's 5%, second to last word, a sour ale at 6.7, and it says cocktail inspired, uh, German Pilsner, uh, Maybach Hellesbach, it's called Auerbach, 6.5%. Hefeweizen, uh, Lidsville IPA, American IPA, 
Pennsylvania Swanky Brown Ale at 4%. Uh, Vienna Mild English Mild Ale. Black Knight Satellite, which I'm drinking. And Noob Noob Pale Ale, American Pale Ale brewed with orange peel, touch of spice, and dry hopped with El Dorado Ops. Oh, there's a couple more here, too. Low End Theory, Black Cascadian Dark Ale, a Rauchbach Rauk Beer, a Kolsch, Laura Engels IPA is their India Session Ale, <laughs> <laughs> Drawing Down the Moon, Sati, Historic Finish, Rye Ale. Wow, they really got a lot going on here. Empire Special Bitter, an ESB, and Antons and Animals, a Sour Berliner Vice, Kettle Sour. It's a lot so of you can see. 20, 20 taps, so uh, 20 beers available. And they always have a little uh, refrigerator to the side where they have uh, bottles for sale. And you know, they always have a menu and bottles to go. And So really glad that I, I, when we did this episode, this is one that really comes to mind that, you know, when I want to take a, a trip to a local place, there are a few breweries closer, not too many, but none of note. Um, this is a destination. This is definitely worth my 20 minute ride. And I never leave without a bottle or two of their, their beers because they are that good. So thank you again, uh, everybody at batch brewing, keep uh, making good food and great beers. And, uh, that feel good tap is, a, is another good story. Uh, just great things happen at batch. So uh, go make some new friends there because, uh, like I said, when you go in, you, you might not be in a brewery full of strangers, but when you leave, you leave a brewery full of friends. So that's what drinking local is about, right, guys? Mm-hmm. So uh, speaking of uh, drinking local, uh, I recently, a couple months ago, visited Ross, and he introduced me to a lot of his locals. So I'm going to turn it over to him, and he can tell us uh, – about some of his local spots down in North Carolina. So take it away, Russ. Yeah, so uh, the first one I'll do tonight will be uh, from Mystery Brewing. They're in Hillsborough, North Carolina. Um, it's, uh, as I was talking to JR earlier, it's uh, people around here are like, oh, Hillsboro, but it's the way our roads are set up, it's actually only about 20 minutes from my house to get there. Um, Mystery Brewing uh, opened, I guess, almost six years ago. I think it was 2012 that they first pumped out their first one. Um, they were actually a Kickstarter. Uh, the guy who started it didn't get quite enough on Kickstarter, so he took in some other investors as well. Um, I think he got he got around forty five or 50000 on Kickstarter and then took in some other investors and got it up and running. Um, as far as what they uh, as far as what they can and sell in stores, um, they don't have what uh, you'd generally say any kind of flagship beer, they are purely seasonable. Um, so they have, uh, they'll have like a, a hoppy beer of some kind, an IPA, um, a dark beer of some kind every season, a porter or a stout, uh, a saison, and um, a session beer of some kind. And they'll, so they'll have four beers for every season. And, um, and so every three months they're going to pump out you know, cans of whatever the next season's beers are. Um, I found them because of the beer I'm going to try tonight, which is Six Impossible Things, which is a uh, an oatmeal um, coffee chocolate stout, your standard kind of winter stout there. Um, and uh, I was looking for something coffee-ish, and uh, I, had, um, I hadn't really had much from them before, and I studied, uh, I stopped by a, a bottle shop, uh, and uh, somebody just recommended them to me. Oh, if you're looking for something that's coffee, that's that's pretty good. And I was like, okay, so I'll give them a try. Um, and I've stuck with that ever since. They make a they make a summer stout that's pretty good too. That at least that I like. That's called Papa Boys. That's uh, got like a, a little lemony um, flavor to it. Um, I guess it's a, it, that's pretty solid. Um, so you know, like I said, they've got this uh, they've got this deal where they don't have something that they really make year round. Every every three months, they swap everything out and and go with uh, uh, another lineup of four beers of the four styles I mentioned, or something close to it um, for uh, for that you know for three months at a time. Um, so what we're trying here is the this is the winter dark. So that's the the stout and uh, pop it open here. Give it a pour. Um, another thing I'll mention about Mystery is they um, 
they don't go in for anything really big. So I want to say the highest ABV beer they have is probably mid sevens. Um, and, uh, which is kind of unusual. I mean, so usually a brewery pumps out something that they're going to say, Hey, you know, here, here's something that's got a lot higher alcohol <laughs> in it. But, uh, but they don't, they, um, they tend to stick somewhere in the, in the five to, to low sevens range. Um, so having said all that, uh, what I'm the, uh, the oatmeal stout that I'm trying, uh, again, is called six impossible things. It is, um, it's pretty dark. It's not completely opaque. It's maybe got almost a, if you look at it just right, it's, it's almost, you can almost get a brown out of it if you hold it up to the light. Um, the head goes away pretty quick. Uh, um, it's, it's actually gone already. Uh, from when I deported it just before I started speaking. Um, but what you get on the smell, the first thing you get is some, uh, a lot of, you get the roasty malt out of it right away and then little chocolate and coffee at the end. And so that's another thing I wanted to point, say about mystery is, uh, all, of all the things they do, they don't really make something where one of the ingredients overpowers the others. They don't, I mean, I mean, some people target that, right? They're going to make something that's big for a flavor and they don't really do that either. They, they, they shoot for stuff that's, uh, you know, well, well blended things go together and you can take your time sipping it and, and figuring out all the little different flavors that are coming out of it. Um, so having said that, we'll, uh, have some here. And yeah, so, uh, the taste, um, uh, kind of goes the same way the, that you got the smell, you get the, you get a little roastiness first. And then you get some chocolate and some coffee kind of blending in at the end. It's a uh, slightly sweet and then just a smidgen of bitter right at the end. So it all, uh, it balances out really well. It's, uh, it's something that, um, you can just sit back and have good conversation and, and drink and not worried about getting, uh, too hammered, uh, meanwhile, enjoying yourself. Um, it's, uh, the only thing I ever have to say about it is I, I tend to drink heavier stuff as John knows. And, um, so this for my own personal taste ends up coming off a little, you know, the, the body on it is a little thin from what I normally drink. It uh, could be somebody else's, uh, selling point for it, I guess. Um, it, uh, from, from the smell and the taste, I guess I, I often expect the body to be a little, a little more than it is, but, um, but that's that's a mild, uh, just that's just my, my my one mild thing. I guess it's more surprising to me than anything else. Um, I, I however I love this stuff. I buy it whenever it comes out. Um, if you go to uh, if you go to the brewery, a lot of times um, there's some of this in the cooler um, from the from the previous batch that was made, and you can you can still get a, a four pack of it uh, off season for the beer. You just uh, have to ask for it, but at least that's the way it was when I was there last. Um, and they're conveniently located right next to a very good barbecue place in Hillsboro. Um, since I was at Mystery Brewing last, they've started making their own food. So I'm not sure how that's working. Used to be able, you could take the barbecue right into the brewery and uh, the brewery's tap room. And eat. Um, I'm not sure if they're still doing that since they're making a the food. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about them. Again, they're they're local. They do charitable events. You can go to their website and see a list of all the charities they get involved in and where they donate their money. Um, on, if you follow them on Facebook, there's always something popping up. Um, uh, some event they're getting involved in local. Um, other than that, I can say that they're just one of my. They're a small local place, and uh, and I I give them uh, they they have three or four things that I. We'll go out of my way to the beer store to get, and um, and then the way they do it without having that single flagship, so that you're constantly rotating the thing you see on the shelf from them. I think it works out pretty well. Sounds like a great plan. It was, it was something new from them. So yeah. uh, rather, and, and at, <clears throat> at the tap room, they have they have some one offs of the things they've made. Right, um, none of that ever gets canned or, or distributed that I know of. I've never seen it on tap anywhere else. Um, so they'll have little, 
they'll have uh, slightly different you know variations on, on the things that they've that they've canned and and have made it to the bottle shops. But again, that's only the tap room. So. Great. Well, Mystery Brewing sounds like a great place. Next time I'm down there, you have to take me in there. <laughs> we can definitely get over there. So and that's good. Well, thanks. Tour, their tour is pretty good, um, and it's a. Uh, I, 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 I've taken it a couple times just because it's a small place and it happens pretty quick. And, uh, you know, while you're there, you're, they're serving you the, the beer that's in season and, um, and, uh, you get up close and personal on a lot of the, um, because there's, because they are so small, you get up close and personal on a lot of the, uh, um, the process and the equipment and stuff. So that's not, so anybody that's not familiar with the, you know, beer brewing process is getting right up next to the equipment and the ingredients and everything else. It's, it's, it's a, it's a very, it's a, it's one of the better tours as far as brewery goes. Breweries. That's one of the, that's one of the great things about patronizing the small local places is you get a little bit of a personal touch like that. You get a personal tour and uh, you can ask questions about how, how the beer is produced, the ingredients, um, and you get hands on, you know, to see the equipment that they use. So, uh, as opposed to you know a big a larger you know regional brewery where it's like a cookie cutter operation and uh, you're on some uh, way behind glass or whatever yeah this is exactly yeah, you're 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 right next to everything and you can see up close and personal what's going on super well thank you for sharing that with us uh, I think it's time for us to move on to Missouri so Dan what do you have for Missouri for us all right well. I have, it's kind of like I have a tease. This is from Mother's Brewing here in Springfield, Missouri. And um, MILF is one of my absolute favorite beers. It comes out usually in January or February-ish, just depends on the year. And uh, this year they dropped a Brandy Barrel version of it uh, just a couple weeks ago, a week or two ago. And so I, in order to explain Brandy Barrel MILF, I kind of need to explain the regular MILF. Um, for those that aren't familiar with it, it is um, an 11% Imperial Stout. And it is aged, it is brewed with cocoa nibs and raisins, and then aged in rum barrels, sherry barrels, bourbon barrels, and brandy barrels. So they blend all of those barrels together. They kind of figure out which barrels are tasting good that year, and then they, they do a blending each year. And um, usually they've been selling it in four packs of 12-ounce bottles. <laughs> then when they do, when they do one-offs, they do them in uh, 22-ounce bombers. And there is a rye barrel version, so they're taking just the straight rye barrels and in, in selling that. And not, it's not a blend of any of the others. And uh, they just released, like I said, the Brandy Barrel. Let me take a quick pour here. It is pretty darn black and has a nice toffee, thick, dark toffee head with nice, tight, tiny bubbles. It is, um, you definitely get that traditional kind of imperial, you know, stout, touch of sweetness on the nose and a little booziness, a little... Uh, I think the brandy shines through a little bit, and I love it. Some people, maybe not as much, and others more so, but um, let me take a taste here. It's just got a, such a great great mouthfeel, a good body, good kind of medium body, and then you get that warm booziness. It's not hot by any means at all for a barrel-aged stout. And then it's kind of like... There's a little chocolate, a little slight bitterness, but I get kind of the impression of almost a grapiness. And there's and, I, and that comes from the brandy barrels. I've been so I've been told there was a couple of years that, where MILF the brandy barrels just weren't very good that year, and there was almost none of that kind of grapiness that came through at all in the regular MILF. And so then now it's been nice having the brandy barrel version because you can really see it shine through. And I love it. And like I said, some, we, did a, we just did a tasting side by side with the rye and the brandy. And some people liked the rye a little bit better. I love it too. I'm not complaining at all. It's a touch, got that kind of spicy rye note and a little bit stronger, a little more 
um, tannin and barrels come through, kind of that bitterness lingering kind of on your tongue. Um, and maybe it, it almost seems a touch more chocolatey than the brandy barrel was. The brandy tends to be, um, it's a touch sweeter, seems like, and then you get kind of that grapey, whiny, whiny flavors kind of coming through. And um, I love the brandy barrel. It's, it's my favorite. I like the rye a lot, but the brandy is, is right up my alley. And um, it, it finishes just nicely on the tongue and the palate, kind of lingers, a little sweetness, a little of that, like I said, that barrel flavor coming through. And it's just, um, it's what, as soon as I taste, I used to work for the distributor back in Joplin, Missouri, about an hour away from here. And uh, when the first time I, t- I, I saw it hit the floor, I'm like, ooh, what is this? A barrel-aged stout from Mother's. Awesome. So I tried it. And as soon as I got the first four-pack, I tried a bottle. And I was went back the very next day to the uh, d- to the the main liquor store in town there, and I just grabbed a whole case. And I, you know, they had a little side stack, and uh, I just grabbed a whole case and bought the whole case. And so um, I was on board from day one. And man, I'm glad I did because now in the outlying markets outside of Springfield that they distribute to, it is really hard to get even a four pack. Um, people have caught on and. Uh, that's, I'll tell you, that's one of, been one of the biggest benefits of moving here to Springfield is that I have un, almost unlimited access to uh, Mother's Brewing. You can always, you know, the, the brewery is going to be the last place in town that's still going to have their bottles for sale. Seems like they always have a nice supply there in the cooler or on tap. And um, so I can get, you know, MILF and anything that they, they make, other gems that they make, I can get them from them. And... Um, they're a really cool place. They have a nice, a good-sized facility, and they have one of the best things about it is that I have uh, two daughters, and we have a dog that we like to take there with us because my daughter started calling it the dog park, <laughs> which, which is awesome because they're like, hey, can we go to the dog park? And they don't mean like the city park. They mean Mother's Brewing, which is just, you know, I think it's awesome. Maybe some parents might frown upon that. I don't know, but... Uh, because they have this ginormous backyard, and it's all grass, and it's uh, fenced in on the sides. I mean, it's open, so you can't just, like, let your dog run off leash. They still want you to keep your dog on the leash, but um, that's a good time there. So they always have, a lot of times in the summertime, they'll have a, they have a bocce ball league, and they do, they have, I don't know, a half a dozen or more um, bag toss games or cornhole cornhole um tons of tables and all that kind of fun stuff so it's a it's a great place they usually have about uh i don't know how many taps they have total it's got to be 20 or more um for all of their regular beers everything they're producing you know that's being distributed plus there's a good probably eight or ten beers on tap that are just tap room you know only exclusives so where they can kind of play around and try things and um they started a uh, new england ipa called sunshine chug suckle and every batch keeps getting better and better it has gotten to the point where it is pretty pretty darn good they're using uh, a ton of citra hops in it and uh, i just love it when when i can get a, a growler of that you guys i mean some you know a lot of people know you know we'll pay a lot of times it's what four or five dollars a can for a 16 ounce can of uh, new england ipas be it m43 or or whatever it is, but I can get a growler for twelve dollars. So it's it's awesome coming home with a half a gallon of that stuff. But they're starting to bottle it, and they've started sending out a few kegs. So hopefully, more and more people will start learning about uh, the the beauty of a New England IPA down here in Southwest Missouri. Is uh, pretty pretty far between to, to see those down here. But anyways, Mother's Brewing in Springfield. If you're in town, it's a, definitely worth to stop in there sometime. Well, I can remember. Dan, about a couple of years ago, and you sent me some of these, uh, some of the regular milfs, and you sent me multiple vintages from different years, and I had never had it. I've heard great things about it, and it's probably one of my top five favorite beers. You know, I love the fact that they they blend it in all the different barrels and then release it as one beer, and it's really just a fantastic uh, tasting beer, complex with all the different spirit. Errol's influence on it. Um, but 
uh, I'm even more intrigued now that uh, they have some of these, uh, you know, the brandy barrel one and the rye barrel one. So we're going to have to get another trade soon where you can uh, send me some of these variants because it's just uh, the regular MILF that you, you sent me is just top notch. And uh, I still have, I think, one or two of those vintage ones you sent. But I'm starting to run low, so I'm going to need more. But, you know, I've always, <laughs> always said that. Uh, um, Possibly going to make a trip to Missouri this this summer. My family wanted to come to the St. Louis area and catch a, a Cardinals game, and uh, you know, I'd have to make a detour to Springfield and uh, make sure that I visit this brewery. And always nice to know that you have a family friendly brewery because you know I have uh, a family, you know, wife and kids, and so does Ross. And it's always nice when you can you know go there. You know, hopefully they have some food there that keeps the family happy usually. But even if you have a dog, you can go to mothers. Yep. So uh, yeah, my sound- favorite. I always look on their uh, social media and look for the days they're going to have a food truck. They don't have a kitchen or anything. So when they have a food truck, I'm like, hey, honey, there's a food truck today. We're we can go to mothers. She's like, all right. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, like that helps keep everyone happy and. I mean, blending five different barrels together for one regular seasonal four pack, you know, of the it's not any more expensive than the rest of their their seasonal four pack releases. And yet it's like there's not a lot of places that are doing that blending multiple barrels together of different spirits. I mean, you know, like Firestone Walker does it for their anniversary beer every year. But there's just not a ton of other places that are doing multiple multiple uh, barrels like that. So, yeah, it's really cool. Well, you're very fortunate to have those have have mothers in your own backyard. So, uh, again, uh, that was like a, lot, a life changing beer for me. You know, uh, again, they take great pride to go the extra mile and and age in all those barrels and blend it together. And it's a it's a great creation. So, I'd really love to try that brandy barrel. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fantastic in its own right. Like as you've reviewed. So, thanks for yeah. sharing that with us. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, the people there, you know, like good beer people and good breweries everywhere, they're just fantastic. And it's taken a lot of hard work and uh, multiple trips for growlers and pints, but uh, it's pretty cool. And you walk in and they go, oh, hey, Dan, good to see you. You know, and they know you by name. (laughs) That's pretty fun about going to a local brewery. Well, that's awesome. And you can tell everybody at Mother's that there's some beer friends up in Michigan that that know all about them and that also enjoy their beer and uh, Thank them for their uh, loyalty. So I'm going to uh, bring it back to Michigan for uh, another beer from my local area, and uh, and really looking forward all night to, to popping this. And it's a beer that doesn't normally distribute, but uh, I have a 12 ounce can of a beer called Red Gobbler, Russian Imperial Stencil Stout, barrel aged in wild turkey bourbon barrels. It's 12 and a half percent. And it's from the River Rouge Brewing Company in Royal Oak, Michigan. It's a, a small nano brewery that makes some amazing root beers. So uh, they do not distribute. But uh, when I paid a recent visit to the brewery, uh, my first visit there, as a matter of fact, the uh, owner and brewer was there. His name is Ed Stencil, which is why some of the beers have stencil in the name. And he happened to have show me a crawler machine he had. It was like a mini crawler machine that does, I think he said, 8, 12, and 16-ounce cans. And he had a cooler full of 12-ounce cans of the beer that I am about to open. So I'm opening this right now. So, Have you heard of anybody else that does those mini crawlers? I've never heard of that before. I've never heard of it either, um, but I was very happy that he had this because otherwise I wouldn't have this beer. <laughs> yeah. And First thing I'm going to tell you is I've got a really healthy, it's not even a one finger head, it's a one thumb head, but it's going down pretty quickly, but it's, it's really a dark brown. I mean, it's great color on this head and, and yeah, and it's, it's shrinking down. It's all, all dissipating pretty rapidly here, but you know, again, a cold black as you would expect, but uh, I'm real excited about this. I, he had another uh, stout that I believe he was releasing tonight that I got to taste when I was there. It was an Asian basil Aiden barrels. But uh, this particular one is the Red Gobbler. Again, Russian Imperial Stencil Stout, barrel aged in wild turkey bourbon barrels. So I am going to smell this and then taste it. So let's see the aroma. I can smell some bourbon, overwhelming bourbon. The aroma is bourbon and maybe like dark fruited, like a raisin 
aroma and oh man this is a, the mouthfeel on this is a, you know really really good it's a full body a little bit of sticky um, and you know definitely you know, you're getting that bourbon and that dark fruit so you know pretty much what I uh, suspected from the aroma is just uh, bursting through in flavor and uh, as many of you know I, I really enjoy a good bourbon barrel uh, stout and this is right up my alley oh, it's really really uh it's not it's it's got a lot of bourbon characteristics it's not hot hot being that it would be just like there's bourbon and then there's beer instead there's one consistent flavor here he's done a very nice job balancing this out and uh, aging it for the proper time in the barrel to really 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 tasty i mean one of the better bourbon stouts i've had in quite some time so Kudos, Mr. Stencil, you've done a great job here. Um, so uh, when we went to the brewery, I went with Uncle Pete, who's not on a broadcast tonight, but is normally on the show with us. And uh, we had actually gone across the street to Motor City Gas Whiskey to pick up whiskey barrels that we're aging our own home brews in. And right across the street was River Ridge Brewery. And we're like, well, we've never been there. we, we got to go. It's like right down the street. So we walked in and... Uh, Ed was behind the bar, and, uh, you know, we asked him all about his place and about his beers, and you know, had a really nice long chat with him, really very passionate about what he does, uh, told us all about all his beers, and that's when he explained about the, the Crowler machine that he had, and I'm like, do you have any 8-ounce cans? He goes, no, but we have the capability to do those if I so choose to buy that size. But he just chose to do 12 ounce. He did say that the same company that he bought the mini crawler machine from makes a 32, and he was considering buying one of those down the road. But fortunately for us, uh, they had some of these 12 ounce cans available for sale, and and uh, fortunately for me anyway, because I get to uh, to drink this tonight. And it's a wonderful beer. It's uh, you know I can remember uh, even their base base stout that wasn't barrel aged called stencil stout was very good. Um, I'm looking at their beer list now, so just to give you a feel, it's a nano brewery, so they do not distribute anything. Um, it's not like a real well-known, like, you know, you can find this anywhere in shelves, or I don't think I've ever seen any of their beers on tap at other bars. So you got to go there to get their stuff, but uh, uh, certainly my first experience there was a very positive one. They have a Nitro Porter, Martha's Mertzen, uh, RRBC Pilsner. Uh, an IPA, basil and grapefruit IPA, Sumatra stencil stout, which is their coffee stout, Dragon Explosion, wow, Dragon Pepper with Mango, that's right up my alley, ALES, which is an Imperial IPA, I believe I tried that, stencil stout, American style stout, so that's what they have on right now. And then I went to their, uh, one thing I wanted to mention when I went on their website, I didn't know this, um, let me go back to this page, uh, it says, recently named as one of the 50 most amazing nano breweries in America by Food & Wine Magazine. So that's a pretty good uh, testament. So River Rouge Brewing Company, uh, it's uh, right in uh, Royal Oak, same street. If you go there, uh, go ahead and go down the street to Motor City Gas Whiskey, a uh, nice little local whiskey distillery. Again, part of our drink local, because I'll be glad to give them a plug, because uh, when you go into there, they, uh, they have... You know, 15, 20 different whiskeys uh, available in there, and they have a, a good cocktail list, or you can just get like a, a tasting flight of their whiskeys too. So, as long as you're on the same street, uh, I think it's 4th Street in Royal Oak. Let me see the address 406 East 4th Street is River Ridge Brewing, and pretty much right across the street is Motor City Gas Whiskey. So, it's a nice little uh, area where you can go and hit both of those places. Um, it's the only way you're going to get River Ridge beers, I believe. Um, so uh, well, I wanted to mention one other beer that I, I think I had mentioned that they had a Basil Hayden version of a stout. And I'm looking on their website, and today, actually, the day we're producing the episode is their release for, it says December 13th and 14th, Hayden's Crusade bottle release. So I'm going to click on this, and hopefully I'll get a description of the beer that they're releasing but i believe it's the basil hayden version of what i'm having only mine's aged in wild turkey so uh but yeah i mean uh what i wanted to just share with everybody is the you know the 
impression that Ed made on me as the brewer. You know, when you're talking to him, you know, he was excited about getting some new equipment and he showed showed us his brewery and the new equipment had just arrived and how excited he was to be able to uh, up his capacity. And, you know, you can tell he just he's just a small man in a brewer, but things are going well and he's, you know, getting a good reputation and his beers are, are very good and he's he's growing and business is good. So really, really happy we uh, made the decision to stop by there. And uh, I definitely will be going back and I would encourage anybody, uh, you know, uh, Royal Oak is – uh, kind of a suburb uh, west of the city, a little bit northwest of Detroit. So, uh, again, anybody coming on a trip to the Detroit area, you know, seek seek out River Rouge Brewing. Um, fantastic, uh, you know, right there in uh, Royal Oak. Uh, Ferndale's right close by there. There's a lot of great places in Ferndale. It's a nice little uh, area there where there's a lot of places to get good beers. So, yeah, it just says uh, we'll be releasing a n- limited number of Hayden's Crusade or Basil Hayden Aid, Bourbon Barrel Age Russian Imperial Stencil Stout. Come early. We have a li- limited number of bottles available. Limit two per person at $20 each. So there you have it. So uh, certainly the way to my heart is through a nice bourbon barrel stout, and this is uh, one of the better ones I've ever had. And you know, how cool that it's right at a local small nano brewery that uh, is doing great things here. And the uh, last thing I'd like to mention is they also participate in the Feel Good Tap. And I believe they, uh, their uh, benefactor is the Humane Society. So, again, you know, just you, you always feel good when you go to places like this. You know, you're, you're not giving your money to a huge corporation. It's going to, you know, an independent craft brewer that's, you know, passionate about what they do and really not in it for the money because if they were, they probably wouldn't be doing it. Um, but... Ed certainly stop by, say hi to Ed, and you know he'll be glad to talk talk to you about everything, uh, how he got to be where he is today, and uh, you know his brewing philosophy, and just uh, really happy I met him, and uh, and look forward to going back to see him and supporting his brewery. So cheers, everybody! Uh, I still got quite a bit of this uh, wild turkey bourbon barrel uh, stout to go, and I'm sure I'll. You sleeping well tonight after I polish this one off. So I think it's uh, back to Ross for our next beer. So let's take it back to North Carolina and to Ross. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, a beer called Pistols at Dawn, uh, which uh, is a brunch stout um, from Lone Rider Brewery. Um, officially, they're in Raleigh, um, about mm, somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes east of me. Um, is uh, this is one of my I say it's one of my favorite local uh, little sometimes harder to get one. It's it's been more easy to get recently. I think they made more of it the last couple of years. You didn't used to always see it on shelves, um, at least not for very long. Um, the last couple of years, there's been a little more going around, so maybe they've upped the production a bit. Um, what I can say about it is uh. The Lone Rider has a whole Western theme going on, so all their beers are uh, shotgun heavy. The Hapikaye, Gunslinger, um, the Pistols at Dawn, of course, Magnificent 77. They um, they don't do a lot of dark stuff, surprisingly. So it was uh, the the one that they they've got this and the Sweet Josie Brown was really the only darks that they do. Um, and uh, so it's really surprising that uh, this one uh, ended up being as good as it is. Uh, they, they tend to concentrate on hefts and pale ales, um, but this comes out really good. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and crack it now. And give it a little pour. It, uh, it uh, has about a finger's worth of uh, nice uh, light, uh, light brown head. Um, the smell on it um, is you're going to get the chocolate right away. It's as, uh, I mean, in comparison to like the last beer I had, this one definitely there's a that's hitting you in the face uh, chocolate smell. Um, as you as you work on it, you get the coffee, a little bit of roastiness, um, and I guess you get sort of a, a vanilla caramelish thing if, uh, as long as you're as long as you're you're looking for it. Um, 
what I'm going to say about uh, this beer is there's there's also a, a barrel aged version of it, um, which is really 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 good, but uh, that's uh, only available in specialty kegs, and uh, you don't see much of it um, going around. Um, so uh, as far as the taste goes, again you're uh, you're getting chocolate first and some coffee. Um, you get um, it's fairly thick, creamy. Um, it's uh, it's not as sweet as perhaps you would expect from the smell. The the chocolate is more. I mean, there's some sweetness there, but it's really more bitterness that comes through at the end than the sweetness. Um, it's definitely a, a fuller body beer than the the previous beer I had. Um, uh, not a lot of carbonation um, going on. Um, but just really smooth and creamy. Um, as you drink it, uh, there, you might get a little vanilla out of it, I guess. Um, but uh, all around, this is uh, this is one of my one of my favorites uh, that I can actually get a fair amount of at any given point. Um, the uh, you know something where I I don't feel guilty just cracking a can of it um, for uh, you know on a on a, on a Wednesday for you know to, to drink. Um, there are, there are other local products, of course, that are a little more rare that I would, I would put above it, but for something that I could drink any, you know, as long as I, uh, anytime I want, this is, uh, this is, this is really good. Um, the brewery itself is located back in a little industrial park, uh, off of 70. Um, it's just one of those places you wouldn't even think, Hey, you know, is there a brewery back there? You kind of pass the post office on the way there, I guess. And, uh, They've got a tent outside, so they have some overflow crowd. Um, the times I've actually been in the tap room, it's uh, it can be a loud place, um, but uh, it's it's usually it's usually busy. Um, they have special barrel events every week, so they'll uh, or almost every week anyway. anyway on uh, and actually, it's usually on Wednesday um, where they uh, they've got some one off of something they're making, and um, and it's on tap at the at the just at the tap room at the brewery only, and it's not something they'll ever bottle or release. And um, those are usually fun. Um, food trucks, we talked about that before. Uh, yeah, this is one of the places where there's a food truck there almost every day. Um, so, uh, yeah, like I said, the, the crowd, it's usually it's a crowd, it's a, usually very crowded there at the tap room, and they almost always using the overflow outside in the, in the tent area. Um, and the beer itself is delicious. Like, Sounds great. I guess that's another place I'll have to go next time I'm down there. Yeah. Like I, for you, uh, J- JR's trip here, we uh, we really didn't do anything in my area. We went to Charlotte and Asheville. Um, well, the time before that, though, we had at least one evening where you oh, took that's me. True. That's true. What was the small place? I thought for sure you would review something from your small little place with uh, our favorite bartender. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, Starpoint. Um yeah, uh, I don't actually have any of their bottles or cans in my house, and I wasn't really until you reminded me that we were doing this. Uh, I hadn't, I hadn't had any recently, so, um, so I didn't have any on hand to do. I, I should make a, I should make a point of having some here, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's uh, okay. You can still give them a shout out as one of your locals. Yeah, sorry, I totally I like uh, the stuff. Point. Uh, and uh, it's one of the few places I know where the, the head brewer also runs trivia on Tuesdays. Yeah. Amen. Well, before we go to Dan for a final beer of the night, uh, I just wanted to run. There's a small article I found with six reasons to drink local beer, and we've covered almost all these. But uh, number one would be small craft beers support the local community, which we kind of covered with the Feel Good Tap here in Michigan. Um uh, you know exactly what goes into your beer, just like when you buy your produce from a farmer's market. When you go to a local brewery, you can meet the brewer in person and ask questions about what goes in it. So that's another cool thing. Microbreweries generally don't transport long distance. So, I mean, you're cutting down on fossil fuels. Uh, you know, in most cases, the, the beer doesn't have to travel far and uh, uh, costs a lot in shipping, not only in shipping costs, but to the you know, price to the environment pays. Uh, on, on that note also, most recycle in several ways. Not only their 
bottles and plastic and cans, which of course in Michigan we have a dime closet, which incentivizes recycling. But a lot of times, even with the you know the spent grains and so forth, uh, they get sent to local area farmers. Um, so uh, you can feel good about that part of things. Uh, sustaining sustain, sustainability factors keeps more money in your local community. Absolutely. We'd much rather support our local community than send uh, our money to one of the the big uh, corporate breweries, and uh, they promote tourism while discouraging drinking and driving. Yeah, you're you're local, so uh, usually there a lot of places have uh, local bus uh, tours that you can sign up for that take you to multiple breweries, local breweries. I know we have one here in the Detroit area, um, Motor City Bus Tours, I believe it's called, but. Uh, uh, Motor City beer tours, um, but yeah, um, just the fact that uh, you know they promote tourism here in Michigan. Uh, you know, beercation is a big thing here. People come from all over to go to Grand Rapids. They call that Beer City USA. You know, Russ and I went to Asheville. That's a beer destination down in North Carolina. I'm sure in Missouri, there's uh, some good beer towns that uh, people. It promotes people to come there and, uh, you know, look at me. I can't wait to go to Mother's someday. I'm going to go to Missouri to probably to see a Cardinals game and to go to Mother's. <laughs> so, so there you have it. So speaking of that, uh, we're going to go back to you, Dan, for our last beer of the night. And I think we've been had enough stouts. I think you're going to take us in another direction to wrap up the show. So take it yes, away, Dan. sir. I'm really excited. I'm really glad I uh, didn't forget about these guys. It's stretching the local theme a little bit. They're not in my hometown. We're going down to American Solera in Tulsa. And a little quick backstory on American Solera for you. Um, Chase Healy and his brother Colin started Prairie, also in Tulsa. Well, they brewed a lot of it out in Krebs, which is kind of towards Oklahoma City, about an hour away. But <clears throat> Chase, um, he sold out his portion and um, they've, he started his own thing with just him and his wife called American Solera. And uh, they have their, they've only been open for just a little over a year. And they, um, I got into their um, society, American Solera Society. And basically what that is, um, if you're not familiar with that, is a, is a bottle club where you're, you're basically prepaying for all your bottles for like a year-long releases and the way it works a lot of breweries do it a lot of different ways but the way it works at american solera is it was um there's there's five releases they just space them out throughout the year the membership's good for one year and um at each release you get the equivalent of four bot four bottles uh 375 375 milliliter bottles um in the, so that's about 20 bottles of beer, and um, if you don't live down there, they allow you to use a proxy, which is someone you can name, say, hey, uh, you know, JR is my proxy, and he's going to be the one that is allowed to come in and pick up the beer for me, Dan. So it's a pretty cool uh, situation. Now, it's a little bit of a drive. I can make it down there and back in the day, but I prefer not to if I have the, the choice. And um, um, I'll go ahead and get to this beer here, though. Let me pour this. This is called Balaton Key. Or I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but the cherry. Balaton Cherries. And American Slayer focuses me a lot on um, wood-aged beers. Um, a lot of things are um, aged in fooders or different barrels wine barrels, bourbon barrels, all kinds of different things. And a lot of some of them are fruited, some are not. And this was the very first um actually society bottle release that I went down there for. I actually after I I already got it, I threw it in the fridge to get it cold and I realized, ah, I should have done I should have done one of their more re recent releases that somebody, you know, could uh, run, run in there and still get. But nonetheless, this is uh what I'm drinking here, it is, um, it's kind of a amber rose tinted to it. You can um, see through it faintly. Not much of a head. It dissipated super quickly. I mean, it's well carbonated. It's just, 
the head nut didn't stay around. It's got a nice aroma of cherries, obviously. <laughs> Little tartness. Um, you can just the aroma just makes me start to salivate. Kind of that that great kind of great sour beer taste that just I know my mouth is preparing for. So, oh, as soon as you get it to the lips, it's a little tart. Kind of might give you the hint of of um, not vinegar, but just that tartness. But as, as soon as it washes over your tongue, it's makes you think of a sweet cherry. But it slides down your throat real nice and easy. Finishes with some lingering bitterness on the sides of your tongue, out in the side and the back. Just a nice, beautiful um, cherry flavor that. Um, Touch of sweetness, touch of sour. It's really well balanced. It's got a nice carbonation. Um, not medicinal at all. If you've had a cherry beer of any kind in the past, very often they can be medicinal. Think you make a think make you think of uh, cough syrup, but this is not that. Um, it's a beautiful beer. I I'm really thankful I was able to make it down there for the release because they did. Um, if you were down there, you were able to buy. If there's any leftover bottles from whatever they they do for these releases. They allow you to buy a couple more, so I was able to buy two more bottles for a total of six, and then I, they also did a Magnum release for these, so I was able to buy two Magnums, which are um, one and a half liter size bottles, and they're, everything they do is in those big, heavy champagne glass bottles, you know, so they've got a lot of weight to them, but um, yeah, this is, their fruited stuff is just fantastic, I mean, everything I've had from their fruited stuff has been great. I haven't had a ton of their just different fooder or, or more uh, straight sour beers. Um, they also have several stouts they do. Obviously, if you've heard of Prairie, you probably know of them for their stouts. So Chase has a great reputation for making the recipes of a killer stout. You know, Bomb and Christmas Bomb and all those different things that Prairie has built their, their business on. Um, in sours, they have some too, but, um, they have one American Slayer does called Dilemma and they, it's a great 12% Imperial milk stout and they do just tons of different ver- variations on that with different, um, flavors. They'll, they do, uh, they've done, they just recently did a coffee one and then there was a maple coffee version of that one. That one sold out like instantly. And then they've done, um, they just released a cinnamon, one called Cinnamon Toast. So I had my, my friend down there in Tulsa pick me up a couple of crowlers of that. So I've got those waiting for me. Um, a mocha, one called Mocha Dilemma. And they're just, they've got this fantastic kind of little bit of sweet, full-bodied mouthfeel, silky smooth that you just love in a, a big, you know, 12% stout. Um, so one of the things that was that's also great about them, everybody was dying for them to do a uh, a barrel aged stout. Well, of course, for a small brewery, that's a you know t- time consuming and costly thing. So what they did is they didn't make it a member beer, the society beer, but they offered they finally did one, and it's called Sons of Darkness, and they offered it up to the members first. You had first dibs if you wanted to buy it. You had one day. <laughs> One day to log on and buy it, and uh, then you, you know you could pick it up whenever. But so of course I got my bottle of that. I haven't I haven't had yet, but I've read so a lot of reviews. They're pretty off the charts for that one. So I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on that one. Some people were asking like, uh, no no adjuncts in this one. You know no additional flavors. And Chase Chase's response was, uh, nope, doesn't need them. So I'm excited you know to see what kind of barrel flavors you know because really truly. A great blend, you know, of, of bourbon barrels, whiskey barrels, whatever. You'll get those toffee and vanilla and and char and toast and tobacco, all those different notes that you'll get from the barrel without having to add, you know, vanilla beans or add it, you know, cinnamon extra to the stout. So not that those are bad. I, you know, I enjoy them as well as anybody. But but uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how American Solar takes off and 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 really grows and and does this. They're a fun place to go to, and it's not terribly far away to get some just world-class beer that I've, I've never had something from them, them that's been a miss. You know, that's one of my big 
not complaints, but it's just one of the downsides if you're trying to get into sour beer and you want to try more and try more and grow your palate and just experience new things. A lot of times a sour beer, you'll, you'll buy a bottle, it's 15 it's $20, $25, and you're like, well, that was, a, that, was, that was a miss. You know, that wasn't very good. That was $20 that I'll never get back. But uh, never had that problem with American Slayer. There's, they just have some beauties that really shine, depth of flavor. You know, you can sip and enjoy them. And maybe as they warm up a little bit in, in temperature, you, it, you peel back another layer and you taste something new. And it's, it, they're just super cool people, too, on top of that, which it's, it's, uh, it's just fun. Can't wait till I go back there. Hopefully sometime soon. Thanks for that review of American Solera. And uh, I looked up Balaton Key on Untapped and it got a 4.3 rating. So they must be doing something right down there. I know yeah. Russ kind of makes fun of me for saying last summer was going to be my summer of sours. And I kind of probably got off the, the path a little bit when the New England IPA <laughs> raised it. But uh, that being said, Ross, when we went to the uh, burial festival, I did try a lot of sours there. And you know, one thing I've discovered is the, the fruited sours, like this one with cherries, uh, I think those, that would appeal to me, the way you described it. Whereas uh, some of the ones that are like vinegary and maybe not, not fruited, they just, uh, they, they still, some of them smell like dirty feet to me and taste like salad dressing, so... So I can also relate to uh, the example you gave about buying that $20 bottle and not really enjoying the first sip. And then you're like, why, why did I buy this? So, But this, uh, you gave a great re- recommendation on American Solera, so I would be comfortable buying their beers. And certainly this, a cherry, yeah, a cherry and all the stone fruits appeal to me. Uh, definitely sounds like uh, right up my alley for the, the, the kind of sours that I have been able to enjoy. Because um, for every one I've enjoyed, there's been two I don't. <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, we we did a big a big Sunday share with a bunch of um, bunch of us in town here, and there were some great beers. And I brought, but I brought in a magnum of their Grisette called Grisette Stone. It was only twenty five dollars, and of course, a, sh- a big share is the perfect time to use it. And it was awesome because. Since it was such a big bottle, everybody could keep going back to it and take another pour, take another pour. And not just, it, it, it was such a beautiful, simple little beer. It's like a 4%, not even just barely tart, but it was just, it was beautifully done. I don't know, I don't even know a better way to describe it because we had it right along Saison Brett from uh, Boulevard and then a bunch of other side project beers. And everybody wanted to keep getting more of that Grisetta Stone to just keep trying you know, the simple beer, JR, you know, you're a home brewer. There's, you know, you cannot hide a flaw in that at all. It'll shine through in a 4%. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, doing, they're doing some fun stuff. I mean, with a, a bright, you know, yellow or straw-colored beer, it's not going to hide anything. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, so I, we've, I have, uh, go ahead. I said I have a question for Dan G because one of our uh, – one of our local bottle shops here, and JR was one that we went to, the first one we went to when you visited, is having a bomb deconstructed event, which I don't know that we've had here before. Um, where they're, I, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, sure do. Yeah, so, uh, and um, I was I was like, uh, I guess I'm kind of looking forward to that, to, to actually uh, getting the, the flavors uh, singled out and, uh, and trying them that way. Um, do you have any recommendations? Because they're going to let us, you know, kind of say how much we wanted each uh, one and mix it. So, oh, oh, are you getting? What do you mean by mix it? The bomb just deconstructed. We've had a few here. I have not been to one. If my understanding is it's uh, Prairie comes in and they have. Uh, they got a, yeah, we've got four separate. barrels. One that's just vanilla. One that's just chili. One that's just chocolate. One that's just coffee. And they're going to let us say, hey, you know, two thirds of the glass. With the coffee and one third chili, and leave out the vanilla and chocolate if you want to. Oh, yeah. I got gotcha. so yeah, you. Yeah, I would. Re- I would just play around with that. I mean, I'm a big fan I, of vanilla stouts, so uh, yeah, I yeah, had I'd, to do it, and, and, I, and I like chili, so I'd probably put you know extra chili in mine. I guess that's what they're trying to teach you is the you know they basically take a base stout and then they introduce different mixes of, of adjuncts to it to get the yeah. flavor profile for each of their uh, you know the prairie. 
I guess Prairie Bomb is the one that they're taking all the different adjuncts they add in and serving them separately to you. So it's a very interesting thing. It would almost, it's, it's kind of finally coming full circle with your mother's, uh, you know, when you had the brandy barrel, which would be one yeah. of the, the elements of the, the true MILF, the base MILF, with this, you know, the, the different barrel one. So that's exactly what, what Ross is describing. They're going to they're gonna take all those adjunct flavors and break them into separate, where you can taste just the vanilla, just the chili. Um, and then I guess what he's saying is you can actually say, I want, you know, percentage of the glass, I want equal percentages of all of them, or double on the chili. That's a pretty cool event. I've seen it around. I, just haven't had it. I would love to go to an event like that. i got to try to make time for that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was just I just didn't know if anybody had done it before and there were any particular mixes that are like, hey, this 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 would this is awesome. But you know, obviously yeah, I'm no, try. I, uh, yeah, but you know, we'll see. Yeah, I haven't been to one of those uh, events myself actually, but like I said, vanilla's vanilla's my go to and for JR it's gonna be the chili, so yeah, just play around and have fun with it, man. Oh, don't get me wrong, I like vanilla too, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> have, they're going to have some of the other bombs on tap as well. So, I mean, the, the opportunity of just taking regular bomb and adding more vanilla bomb to it if you want a little more vanilla out of it. So, yeah. Well, uh, I guess, uh, Russ, you'll be our guinea pig. You'll have to report back and how that goes. Yeah, that's uh, us how it is. That's happening in a couple of weeks. That's happening on the 30th. So we'll see. Sounds good. All right. Well, uh, any closing comments? Anybody want to plug any of their other locals before we sign off? Because it's almost time to go to Mexico City. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some good stuff happening with beer scene here in Springfield. Uh, I wish I would have had something else from one of the other guys in Springfield. Uh, Lost Signal has a new double IPA on I want to go taste. And White River, I always love their gravel bar. And they just released their coconut rye porter. So everybody here around here should go get that. But, uh, yeah, I didn't have anything else from Springfield on hand tonight, so... Had to run down to Tulsa for my next local. <laughs> so you know the well, Jeff kind of knows the restaurant scene here is uh, the barrel culture is is killing it there. They're, I guess they're getting oh a, yeah a big name all all over the place. Um, mm. And uh, they're 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 really knocking it out. But a couple we've got a couple other places that are making you know that are making good beer. Um, uh, there's a Dirty Bowl in in, uh, in Durham does a good job and. Uh, um, you know, we have, we have all, we have our, the ones that have been here for a while, full steam, obviously. And, uh, um, you know, once I space out trying to think of everything, um, but yeah, you know, the local beer scene is, it's always going to be good. I think it, the, the, the local small brewers are always willing to try new recipes and you're always gonna, you know, you're going to get some misses, but, uh, I think on average you get a lot more hits than misses. So it, it works out. Well, I have to I have to throw plug a few of my locals here, and not all of them are within a half hour, but certainly all of them are within an hour. But a new brewery that opened up that's uh, doing great things, and is not really big. Uh, two actually come to mind. One is Urban Rest in Ferndale, not too far from River Rouge, um, and uh, another one is uh, Supernatural Brewing and Spirits, just opened within the last month in Livonia, Michigan. Just opened the doors, so. Please uh, patronize them. Great local brewery. Uh, I've tried their stuff. They have uh, a couple great things out there. Uh, uh, of course, uh, I would be remiss not to mention one of my all-time favorites and one of Russ's all-time favorites, Coonan Brewing um, in Warren, Michigan, um, which we had a Coonan beer on our last episode when we did Old Ales. Of course, I had to break out a, one of their, the coveted Fourth Dementia 4D Old Ale. Um but uh, that's another local favorite for me. Uh, a brewery that opened up about a year ago out in Ann Arbor, Holmes Brewing, makes some fantastic IPAs. Um, Novi, uh, Michigan, there's a brewery called Ascension that does great things and is, does a really good job giving back to the community. Uh, actually, they have a bus, and recently a local beer group here collaborated with them and loaded up a whole bus full of toys uh, through some fundraisers and... Uh, so they do some. They, they make some great beers. Uh, I love that they have Prowlers. I believe I've reviewed one or two of their beers on a show. And and last but not least, Drafting Table, uh, which we've also mentioned in our Howlers, Prowlers, and Prowlers episodes. And uh, they also sell Prowlers, which I never heard of, which are sixteen ounce. 
But now we actually have, I don't even know what they call these, 12 ounces that I got from River Rood. So, but uh, shout out to Drafting Table. Um, the beer we reviewed from them is Grunge Phase, but, uh, which is a collab with Transient. So, you know, I could go on and on. Uh, we all have uh, plenty of locals, but the point of tonight's episode is to support your local craft breweries. Um, most of them are, you know, uh, in it for the passion. Uh, it's not a huge money-making business being a local brewery, but it's very rewarding in many other ways. And uh, it's a feel-good uh, feel good stories that you should be supporting uh, your local local breweries so that's what drink local is all about so that being said i think it's time to go to mexico city you already yes sir so as they say in old mexico city amf if you like this show please tell a friend Please follow us on Twitter and like and share us on Facebook by searching for Christopher Media. You can subscribe to all ChristopherMedia.net shows for free on ChristopherMedia.net. Please make sure to rate and comment on all your favorite Christopher Media shows. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net and thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. New Extra Charge Hot and Iced Coffee from Dunkin' is made with 20% extra caffeine from green coffee extract because we could all use a little extra this year. Whether that's an extra boost, some extra boldness, or the drive to go the extra mile, we're extra ready for whatever comes our way and extra excited to take it on. Let's get it done with a medium extra charged coffee from Dunkin' for $2 with 20% more caffeine. And pair it with Snackable Stuff Bagel Minis for an added all-day boost. Order ahead on the Dunkin' app. America runs on Dunkin'. Participation may vary. Limited time offer. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast-forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh, man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm going to need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.